Hey, real quick. Is story points working for you? A lot of people say that it is. The concept of estimation, they're really good at. But then they have all these problems and then they're not getting any value whatsoever. If you are experiencing that, then this is the right video for you. This is Devon Morris. Welcome to another one of my videos. Let's talk about what's wrong with your story points. Let's begin that journey, right? Um, <laughs> you know, I'm over here doing a class today and story points comes up, right? So let's uh, talk about this whole story point issue, right? Um, now, so you understand, by no stretch of the imagination, am I a big story point supporter, right? I really am not, okay? Um, I believe you can do everything that you need to do without story points. It, it, it's, it's a trust issue. It, it's for people feeling more secure about things. And the truth of the matter is, uh, story points is not a part of Scrum. So I am not of the camp about going to estimate, right? Um, but I am about the camp of making decisions and finding things where you can take the right steps toward making decisions that you need to make. And sometimes, you know, to me, story points can be a necessary evil. I'm not saying to not do it. Uh, you know, if you decide to, most of you all got to do it. So let's not just pretend you just got to deal with it. So most of you all are stuck in a place where you're going to be doing story points regardless of what you think, right? Um, however, we all know that you're doing story points, probably wrong, <laughs> likely wrong, okay? I see my LB out there, what's up LB? Again, what's going on, man? Um, and so, look, here's the deal, right? Let's first real talk about, real quick, just a little bit, what a story point is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a relative estimate of size, size being a combination of complexity, effort, and risk, okay? That's what it's supposed to be, right? Um, and for a lot of people, it's not, it doesn't include complexity, effort, and risk. Um, and then, for a lot of people, it's not a relative estimate, or they estimate things that aren't meant to be relative to each other. Um, probably the biggest problem that most people have is that they take their story points and they make them equal to hours. And I would agree with you after some, you know, some history, you can get a range of what a team can do um, if you utilize them appropriately. But let's talk. Let's talk about some of the things that I see that's wrong with story points and probably what's wrong with whatever's going on with you and story points, right? Um, the first issue. And, and usually the biggest issue for me, regardless of how I think about it, right? There's a learning curve associated with story points. Whether it's new team members, a brand new team, whatever it's going to be. When you don't have an idea about your past performance, it can be hard to do story points. Yeah, there's ways to start it. Uh, there's ways to try to get it right from the very beginning. Um, but... What usually happens because of that learning curve is that people will begin story points by making them equal to hours, okay? And so if you're going to make story points equal to hours, you might as well just do your estimates in hours, right? Um, because it, it's, it's not providing you any benefit, right? Uh, the relative estimate is, estimate is supposed to help you. And, you know, I would rather for you to deliver Deliver, 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 then estimate, right? All estimation is non-value add but necessary. But when you think about that learning curve, that learning curve is truly impactful to the team. It truly is a big problem for the team. And I'm telling you right now, I'm working with a couple clients right now. And you know what? What is the biggest argument that I'm having? Story points. Like, I got people in the camp of, hey, we just want to keep story points because we just want to keep them uh, to the point, hey, well, let's just completely get rid of them to the point of all kinds of stuff in between, like people in three or four different camps. And it, and it is just is what it is, right? But I continually run into that problem, okay? So that that's really the first thing, that learning curve, right? That learning curve is uh, usually a huge issue, right? Um, 
number two, right? There is no universal standard when it comes to story points. There is not one, right? And I'm telling you, there are certain scaling frameworks, right? Um, that says that story points can be normalized, right? I don't know if the latest version of them say that, but I know at some point, certain frameworks were saying story points can be normalized across teams so you can actually do comparisons of whatever it is, right? But there is no universal standard for story points and there could never be a universal standard for story points. You understand? There could never be one. So anybody who thinks that you can have a universal standard for story points is irrelevant, right? It, it just makes no sense. Now, here's the deal. I'm not going to say no names and no scaling frameworks, but have you heard of a scaling framework <laughs> that promotes story points being normalized, right? If you have, just throw the name of the framework in the chat for me. <laughs> I don't want to say no names, but throw it in the chat for me, right? If you've heard of some scaling framework saying, hey, we should go ahead and normalize story points. You can't. There's no universal standard. And since there's no universal standard, um, you can't compare story points across teams, right? So if you're going to use the metric, it's a bad idea to try to compare them across teams. Trust me, I've tried it. I've literally tried it. I've been saddled with that task inside of an organization and back when i cared about getting fired um i would do things like that to try to satisfy the powers that be you know but it was a good experiment for me right and so i learned that it just don't work like it, it, you know you can make that standard in the beginning but when you get to the time of things being delivered everything's out of whack so it just doesn't work period right so understand and recognize that but do me a favor <laughs> if you know if it's a framework that kind of says we should be doing about saying story points can be normalized you know just kind of throw it in the chat for me right uh, we don't want to throw anybody under the bus it just is what it is right it happens right it just happens okay so let's go on with number three right because number three um, <clears throat> let's see the other thing I would say is Story points, normally, there is a misinterpretation. It's misinterpreted as being equivalent to a particular set and actual time units, uh, hours in particular, right? It's meant to be relative, complexity, effort, and risk, right? But there's certain time elements that's always equivalent to story points, right? Um, you know, and a lot of times I see it when people start, right? They will say one story point is equal to one day or one story point is equal to four hours or whatever that standard is, right? But once they start doing that, you're starting to misrepresent your story points as time. It's just purely time, right? And once you do that, you're kind of messing up once again, right? Um, because story points aren't equal to hours, days, um, weeks, months, years, right? It's not equal to that, right? So you want to, you know, be careful about, you know, trying trying to do it in that way because you're just going to just kind of mess everything up, right? Um, you know, probably the f fourth thing, the fourth thing I'll mention, right, is um, subjectivity. Of variability, right? Um, story points really rely on relative estimation. What a team really gives a value. So this particular team gives a value, right? Uh, associated with complexity, effort, and risk, right? Um, but that's going to be different, uh, can be different in the team to some degree. Um, and I see people thinking about story points like they are associated with the individual. Well, what you should be estimating if you're utilizing story points is, is a high-level estimate. You probably should be estimating the requirement, right? But people are saying things like, um, we should have, like, we got 50 story points, we got 10 members of the team, so each person should be doing five points each. 
subjectivity and variability makes that impossible, right? Um, you got different ways that people interpret how they're going to get the work done. Um, you're going to have inconsistency in terms of the, the, the estimate itself, um, how it affects whatever plan they're going to make. It's going to impact your predictability. Um, it's just going to cause a lot of inconsistency because of the subjectivity. So you, you really can't do it. I mean, you can. I mean, you can. Um, and if you don't care about what your results are, then you don't care what your results are. It's all good, right? It's no problem, right? It's no problem whatsoever. Um, you know, and, and that's a normal thing that I see. I definitely see that you know, more often than what I, I want to, right? Um, final thing, final thing I'll say, and then I'll try to remember it to sum it up, right? The last thing that I would say that story points probably, um, where you're probably wrong at, right? Is that it's really difficult to, <laughs> to kind of communicate story points external to the team, right? External to the agilists that exist in the building, right? People outside of that don't know what the heck story points are. If your organization has decided to utilize this metric, this, this thing, this way of estimating as a way it's going to estimate overall, then that's a different thing, right? But for most people, the stakeholders that exist outside of your developers, uh, your scrum masters, your agile coaches, your program managers or project managers that have some association with scrum teams, your uh, mid-level managers, the supervisors that directly work with uh, the actual scrum team members or agilists in general, they're classically the only ones that know about story points. So trying to communicate them outside of the team can be really, really hard. Uh, and, and there are people that touch that team, right? And so it's a really hard thing to deal with. Um, I like to talk in terms of return on investment, um, things that are a little bit more measurable that you can actually measure whether you got that thing or not, right? You saved X amount of time or you done this thing, right? Those things you can measure much better. But people tend to speak that kind of language of return on investment like revenue or time saved outside of the actual scrum team, right? And the scrum team doesn't necessarily speak that language, but I would expect the product owner to understand that language. But, you know, um, you know, mo a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't, right? So you want to be really, really careful in terms of that because that external communication can absolutely be an absolute killer for you, right? Um, and if people haven't been trained on what a story point is. Um, then they want to also try to figure out what they can do with the story point, if they can use the story points to do a ton of planning with. Um, and, you know, that can be really difficult when you have different teams who have an eight story point, but those eight story points mean completely different things, right? Um, but it, it's just not designed for that, right? Um, I don't think it was ever designed for that. Um, so, you know, let me go ahead and, and, and repeat this, right? And, and, and here, look, let me ask y'all a question, right? What did I miss here, right? I'll, I'll summarize them, but type in the chat what you think I missed in terms of what's wrong with story points, right? You know, I got one more thing I can say, like, people be putting them on task, right? <laughs> no, it's not a precision estimate, right? It's not that, it's not for detailed estimation. But again, different problem, I'm not gonna even debate that one. Um, but tell me, is there something that I missed here in terms of what's wrong with people's story points, right? Um, do me a favor, type that in the chat, right? Um, whether you're on LinkedIn, whether you're on YouTube, uh, YouTube, type that in the chat because I think that's absolutely critical in terms of how we move forward. So that being said, let me repeat this so we're on the same page, right? Um, first and foremost, uh, the learning curve is, is the first killer for the vast majority of the team, right? Um, the second thing is uh, there is no universal standard. <laughs> there just isn't, right? <laughs> and people want that to be a universal standard, right? Um, it can misrepresent time. That's that third thing, right? Uh, that fourth thing is subjectivity and vari variability, right? Um, and then the fifth thing is going to be the actual uh, external communication for people outside the team, for people outside the team, right? Um, you know, and, and, you know, it just part of what it is, right? Um, and you can't get away from it, but those at least are the five things that I think is classically wrong with your story points. Now, you know, I'd, I'd say just get rid of them. 
<laughs> right? I say just get rid of the story points, right? Because I really think that just story points are non-value add but necessary. We could have a whole lesson on that one day, right? Um, but I think all estimation, no matter what it is, is non-value add but necessary. And if you are at a point where you focus more on delivery and maybe you can deliver air day, like air day, like air single day, then you probably could be at a place where you get away from that, especially when you got these organizations that really, really, really wanna, um, <laughs> really don't trust the team. Because a lot of times the reason why you're estimating is because you're not trusted, right? Um, you know, most of you all get a date for your effort, right? And if you get a date for your effort, then what's the point of estimation? Estimating in the first place, right? At that point, right? You probably want to estimate before that to help out with the date. But if you get the date first and now you're estimating after, that's a trust thing usually. Usually, it's a trust thing. I'm not going to say all the time because I don't want you to kick me in the back or something like that for me saying all the time. But the idea is that is what it is, right? Um, let's see. What have people said? I see the name Safe Thone out there. We're not going to call any scaling frameworks out, but we understand why that is that. Um, you know, let's see. Story points used as a KPI. <laughs> Like, okay. Oh, man. So a story point used as a KPI, it's probably a problem. <laughs> because, again, there's no universal standard. So how can you measure people off the variability that is going to happen with story points? So literally, as a KPI, it makes no sense. <laughs> It makes no sense, right? So, Gail, I'd be a little concerned about that if I'm you. Like, for real. Like, I have Have I seen an organization utilize story points as a KPI? I have not. Like, I would just be like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, I'm real, I'm real good at telling people inside of companies, this is stupid. Like, this makes no sense. Like... The path that you're about to take is going to end up disastrous. You ain't got to take my word for it. Just holler at me when you hit the disaster. I'll come in and we can do a whole agile rehab. <laughs> but story points as a KPI? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> as, a, as a KPI? Nah, man. Nah. You don't want to do that. Like, for real, for real? For real, for real, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Whoever's doing that, it's a whole pro I hope there's no scaling framework that is pro recommending that. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's crazy. So look, don't do that. I'm telling you, don't do that. It makes no sense at all, right? Um, you should actually measure measurable things. <laughs> Um, we get bias here. Bias is definitely something that happens amongst teams. Um, so, you know, it just, story points is just one of those just topics where it's just an interesting thing. But I will go back and say to you, like I said in the very beginning of this video, I am not a supporter of any form of estimation. I'm just not, right? Um, I, I've done it. I do great with metrics, trust me. I'm a metrics aficionado. I want to say a metrics god, but I'm not that I'm not that great, right? But I love I love dealing with metrics and using numbers for things. I got this whole six sigma black belt, tie some things in with that. Um, so I love metrics. Don't get it twisted. I really, really do. Um, I just don't like metrics that's gonna vary on me. Like vary on me, not because the metric is varying on me, vary on me because of inconsistencies, right? Um, that right there, you try to weed out the inconsistencies, but this is a really hard thing to do when you lack a universal standard. You have subjectivity and variability, so that's really hard to do in that situation, right? Um, you know, um, and, and P. Bell says, bias meaning uh, towards personal agendas, and, and people do have personal agendas when it comes to things like story points, right? Um, so here's the deal, caveat, I don't know what you do in your life. I don't know what you do in your work life, um, I'm not going to tell you not to do story points. If you got to do it, you got to do it. You might want to keep your job. Don't go in there and be talking about, hey, Devon said, don't do story points and get yourself fired. Now, if you're going to get yourself fired, make sure you got six months of pay saved up. <laughs> Just make sure you do. If you don't, you ain't going to have no fun, man. 
I'm telling you right now, you ain't gonna have no fun, right?